Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands tutorial showcase series. So today what we're going to be talking about is the various biomes and minor structures that you may encounter during your time within the Between Lands. We will also touch briefly on some of the larger structures, but we're not going to go into those today. They're going to have their own dedicated videos. Um, so to go ahead and get started, first up, of course, we have the raised island. This is kind of like a sub biome that will spawn within basically a, a kind of like a structure more than anything that will spawn within um, various different biomes. And it's basically just a large island that's held up by giant roots. Um, that are kind of holding it up and sometimes you will find chiromal nests atop those and we'll talk more about chiromal nests a bit later on now in addition your floating islands will occasionally contain one of these these are a chiromal matriarch nest and there's the matriarch that's flying around over there um, you'll occasionally come across these um, and you'll see they have little grapling bodies down there and stuff um, we'll talk more about the Chiromal Matriarchs, but just be aware that these do spawn on top of the floating islands and is where you can do battle with the Chiromal Matriarch if you feel so inclined. Now next up we have the Swamplands Biome. This is kind of like your safe, um, I would say safe biome. This is the one that I always prefer to set up shop in and call home. This biome does have a few mobs that will spawn, primarily Swamp Hags blood leeches, and on occasion whites, um, and then termites of course can come from the rotten bark in this area. Lots of passives tend to spawn in this biome, and not to mention a lot of vegetation, um, especially like ed edible vegetation that will spawn here um, in the form of like nettles and mushrooms and things like that. Um, this is also where you're going to find the majority of trees, sap trees, nibble twigs, um, weed wood, uh, you'll also find rubber trees like right over there and you'll find your um, your decayed trees and stuff in this area not to mention giant trees will spawn in this biome um, fairly commonly though giant trees will spawn in other biomes of course um, most of these things aren't unique only to this biome but this biome tends to be a great safe location uh, to kind of live in and work from so you also find uh, giant tree stumps in this biome as well and since we're talking about minor structures giant trees and giant tree stumps both if you dig inside of these you will come across what's called dendrothist like this right here um, it will spawn rarely um, within the trees and then even more rare to come across is orange dendrothist um, usually a giant tree will have a handful of orange dendrothist and a fair few green dendrothist um, inside of it. So, and definitely worth grabbing whenever you spot this, especially if you plan on getting into herb lore, because you're going to be using a lot of this to make dendrothist vials. In addition, there are shields that can be made with it, and it makes a great building block as well. The tree stumps, like this one, will also contain dendrothist. Um, so definitely worth keeping an eye on, especially considering there's generally a little bit of dentrothist at the top that's uncovered. So it makes for an easy uh, place to farm and it will never be defended by, um, it will never be defended by pyrads either. So, um, and of course the rotten bark, do be aware once again that it will spawn termites on occasion when breaking it. Um, so just keep an eye out for that um, as well. Also, while you're in the swamplands, you may run across one of these. This is a um, kind of a swampland subtype biome, um, which is, it's called the Swamplands Clearing. And this is actually a location for a boss fight. We're going to be covering this in kind of a dedicated mechanics system because there's actually a lot to this boss, more than meets the eye, I think. Um, because there's ways to increase its difficulty and there's after effects after defeating it and different things. So we're going to be having a detailed uh, video discussing that. So next up, we're going to talk about the deep water biome, which of course is filled with deep water. Um, this is very noticeable because you're going to see these crag rock formations, kind of these little bits of uh, boulder that kind of stick up out of the ground. 
Um, this is going to be the primary place that you're going to find crag rock, though you can find it on raised islands as well. Um, most of the plants that are going to be here are going to be water-based plants. You're going to see algae. You're going to see bladderwort um, flowers around here, as well as things like swamp kelp and various um, underwater uh, plants as well. Um, the ground here is going to be primarily mud. Um, you can also find coral. You can see there's a blue coral and there's an orange coral, kind of your deep water coral that spawns here. Um, the mobs that you're going to encounter are primarily going to be anglerfish and lurkers, though you will see fireflies kind of floating around, as well as occasionally dragonflies uh, within this biome. Beyond that, there's nothing too important that uh, you need to be on the lookout. I mean, most everything that you're going to be farming here is going to be pretty much boom right there. Now, next up, we're going to talk about the island biomes. Um, this is a raised island biome. Um, you can tell generally because the island's going to be up one block off the water surface, um, whereas the patchy islands, kind of your more normal islands, are going to be um, level with the, uh, with the ground in most areas. But it's usually a little bit harder to get out of the water here. Not too difficult because you can just break something or find something like this giant root to climb up out of the water on. So um, these are generally where a lot of your really dense areas of giant roots are going to be found is around these islands, though you will find them throughout the dimension. Um, also, you'll notice these right here. These are uh, ruined, ruined towers. And we'll talk briefly about these. Um, you're going to find these around the island biomes, just kind of spawning um, on the islands here. Um, and basically, these are just kind of like miniature dungeons. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover these within this episode because I don't really classify these as a major structure. Um, sometimes they can take a little while to find um, one of these. But let's go ahead and head on in. You can see that on the bottom floor, there's going to be termite spawners and there's going to be urns of chance uh, throughout this dungeon. If we head on up, uh, this floor, this is the entrance floor, there's nothing um, as far as spawners or anything like that goes. There will be pots of chance inside though. Uh, this next floor, more pots of chance available. And then if we move on up, the next one should be a spawner floor. This one is a Chiromaw spawner that we've got here with urn of chance there in the corner. And basically, you're just going to be fighting your way up this tower, right? Um, with various different mobs on different floors and stuff. Next floor, we have night hags, or swamp hags, I mean. I'm thinking of D&D. &D. Because I've got, I've got my players doing this whole big uh, night hag thing uh, in my campaign. And yeah, anyways. Anyway, swamp hags on this floor with more urns of chance. Um, there and then if we head on up you can see that all these floors are kind of blocked off so you kind of have to open them up which is good because it means mobs from the upper layers aren't going to be coming down and attacking you now next up this is the pirate floor this is probably the hardest floor i would say out of the dungeon even more so than the top floor just because pirates can be a little bit dangerous and then next up we have the white floor um, this floor is just filled with whites. Not too bad if there's nothing for them to possess. Um, but I would suggest maybe hurrying and breaking down uh, the spawner if at all possible. That will come in handy. And then finally to the very top. Now this is going to have a couple spawners. You can see on one side we have whites. On the other side we have night hags. This makes it excessively dangerous if, you, if you're not quick about it because of the fact that these whites will spawn and they'll possess the night hags, which is very, very dangerous. Um, looks like we didn't have anything spawn in the chest. And I want to show you what happens if we go in and we break off this spawner. And we head on up. Break off this spawner. And then we go ahead and head on up to the top. And we break off these spawners. And let me go ahead and set it to peaceful to kill off all the mobs. You'll notice that the the crag rock, the, the smooth crag rock starts glowing. 
um, upon destroying all the spawners. Um, so something to take note of. And then if we head up, and as far as the spawners go, it's pretty much always going to spawn uh, those creatures. But you'll notice I got an achievement whenever I went to survival mode. Basically what's happened is I've cleared out the entire dungeon after breaking all the spawners and all that. And what's going to happen is as soon as I start heading down, um, this is also a great place to get wisps for the record. Um, but as soon as I start heading down, we're going to enter kind of a crumbling phase. So I suggest you get all your looting done as you go. Um, because now if I start heading down, there we go. Blocks are going to start falling from the ceiling and you kind of have to like hurry down. The blocks will damage you if they land on you. So just be aware of that. But you have to navigate your way back down out of here. Um, and before this happens, generally, pretty much every block within the dungeon is going to be unbreakable. Um, but once the tower crumbles, you can then break everything. Uh, you can break everything down. So once you do the little crumbling phase. So now, yeah, you can see the ward's still up at the moment. But here we go. Ground's going to start shaking. I guess I should show you. You'll notice that blocks are falling faster. Um, the longer you're in there, the faster they're going to start falling. And now the ward is gone off of this. So um, now we can break everything top to bottom. So, Because normally you're not going to be able to break anything except for pots of chance. Also worth noting um, is if I go up to this one, for example... Maybe we flew the Drayton up here or something like that. And... If I go into survival mode, you'll notice it teleports me down and it gives me blindness for a second. So you're not going to be able to cheat your way up the Crag Rock Tower or, you know, just fly your way up to the loot at the top or anything like that. You're going to have to actually fight your way up. Unless you're in creative mode, then you can just fly right up there. But um, just something to bear in mind when it comes to these towers so I think that's I think the reason they're not spawning any loot is because I'm going up there in creative mode but but anyways that's how the towers work so just kind of a minor little structure for exploration now aside from those along the course islands um, there is a chance that you'll come across I actually have one marked there's one other ruin that you might spot and this one spawns near the islands as well this is an idle head it's covered in moss and stuff and it's made out of crag rock and if you go into these and you dig down about where the center would be on this and you just dig straight down these are always going to be kind of flooded so just bear that in mind that they're going to have mud underneath um, but there will be a chest inside of these with uh, some loot in it as well so you can come across those in addition to the towers now these are the actual patchy islands and you can see that they're um, level with the water here and something else to bear in mind when it comes to the islands is this is where you're going to get hearth grove um, these are hearth grove trees and they're going to spawn just around the islands um, so just bear them in mind maybe grab some saplings and stuff they make a really good looking wood to build with so um, but you'll notice the patchy islands are pretty similar to the raised islands just being um, a little bit more accessible to the water layer um, here. Also a great place to find bulb cap mushrooms though these can spawn in most biomes um, but they you will see quite a few of them on islands and stuff as you're going through these. The islands will have a lot of vegetation. Um, there are some specific vegetations to raised islands and patchy islands each but it and the swamplands are where you know, eight, probably 80% of all vegetation types within the between lands are found in swamp lands and patchy and raised islands. Um, so if you're looking for plants, those would be the two biomes I would highly suggest you go around. Plus they're not overly dangerous. The primary hostile mobs that spawn outside of the standard, which would be the standard mobs would be night hags, whites, chiromals, you know, um, but you'll also run across silt crabs in these areas as well as a fair few anglers and lurkers to be aware of but of course lurkers tend to keep the angler population down so it's not overly dangerous inside of these biomes that's pretty much the 
the islands, Pachi and Ray's islands, um, in a nutshell. Now, next up, we have the marshes. There's actually two different variant subtypes for the marsh. There's Marsh O and Marsh um, 1. And this is... This is a Marsh 1 that we're in right now. Um, not a ton of difference between Marsh 0 and Marsh 1. In my experience, Marsh 1 tends to have a little bit more compacted uh, bits of land that are a little bit more patchy, whereas Marsh 0 tends to have a little bit more space in between. You'll see more, not really rivers, but wider bits of water in Marsh 0 in my experience. Now the marshes tend to be just jam-packed with stuff to loot. You'll see tons of different ruins um, within the marshes. As you can see, there's one right there. That's actually one of the larger styles. Um, you'll also see giant weedwood trees that spawn up in the marshes. And you'll see more ruins over here that have spawned up in these marshes. And then in addition, you can find the little spawner ruins uh, within the marshes. So as an example, this is a marsh zero. So you can see a big difference between the two, right? You see a lot more, it's about 50-50 water and uh, soil, and it's not quite as patchy. It's a little bit, I've always been more of a fan of the Marsh Zero than the Marsh One. Um, the Marsh Zero, even though it's got more water, it tends to be a little bit easier to navigate without um, Boots of the Marsh Runner. Marsh One, there tends to be so many drop-offs, it's really, um, can be kind of tough to navigate in truth. So that's the main difference between the two different marsh um, biome types. And then this is another ruin. Um, you've seen this. I've shown this one off a fair few times. But this is one of the ruins that will spawn in the marsh. It's just like this little uh, ruined, I don't know, almost altar area with a monster spawner. Um, these can be, these spawners can be whites, blood snails, leeches, night hags, or swamp hags. Ugh, D and D. And I believe that's all that these spawners can be. Um, no pyrads or anything can spawn within these spawners. And then there'll be like a little treasure chest here with some loot. These tend to be great places if you find one early on to kind of stock up on um, loot from, to be honest, because there's tons of pots of chance and there's tons of chests. And overall, they're generally not too difficult. The main mobs that you're going to be fighting in here are Chiromals and Shallow Breaths and then whatever the spawners produce. You will occasionally see whites and night hags here, uh, blood leeches and things like that. But for the most part, you're gonna be seeing a lot of shallow breaths, a lot of chiromals. Both of which really rely on getting a jump on you uh, to deal their damage. Chiromals are extremely easy if you spot them, but they tend to like to sneak up. Shallow breaths moves, move extremely slow and only apply poison. Um, so it can be pretty easy to dispatch if you know that they're there. You know. Now, in addition, these biomes have one other thing that they can spawn, and that is this. This is a white fortress, and this is actually the location. This is one of the early big dungeons, um, so to speak. There's actually quite a bit in here. We're going to have this as kind of a dedicated video to it. There is a boss that spawns here um, that you're going to have to contend with, and a short little dungeon to go through. But inside of there rests the primordial malevolence boss. Uh, and these will only spawn inside of marshes. They can spawn in Marsh Zero and in Marsh One, both. And um, something to be aware of. Most of the marshes that you go through will not have one of these. Um, so they are semi-rare to come across. Now last up on our biome types is this right here. This is the Sludge Plains biome. And this is pretty much all mud, coarse dirt, and sludge um, with little bits of water that run through it. As far as mobs, you're going to encounter sludges, small sludges, and peat mummies um, within this biome. Trees are pretty much all going to be these rotten trees here, um, which of course will contain termites. Uh, there is a little bit of weed wood that runs through the middle, and on a very, very rare occasion, you may see a giant great wood tree here. You also see a lot of these. These are in a lot of biomes, but these are hollow logs. Um, these are used for making amat paper, which we're going to talk a bit more about later on um, when we talk about various materials and things that we can gather within the Between Lands. 
Um, now, in addition, you'll come across these right here. Of course, these are tar pools that can spawn tar beasts. Um, so do be aware, this is a very, very dangerous biome. Very, very dangerous. Um, also a great place to farm uh, middle gems if you're feeling brave. Though for the most part, if you're not up on land, it's not too bad of a biome, or if you have um, rubber boots. I do highly suggest you come here with rubber boots. The sludges on their own aren't overly difficult. The main thing to watch out for is a situation like this, where you have a couple tar base. This could be a nasty fight uh, if you're not well geared. So, um, Within this biome, there are a couple structures to be aware of. First up, is this structure right here, and there's various types of these. These are ruins, kind of like the ruins that you find underground. Um, there's gonna be these above ground ruins that do have uh, pots of chance within them um, to get some easy free loot from them. Um, and then in addition, you're gonna find this right here. This is a sludge menace dungeon. And this is gonna have its own dedicated video um, but this is the largest and I'd say most difficult dungeon um, and really boss fight within the entire Between Lands. There is a dreadful peep mummy running around right here. We're going to talk about him. This was from when I was recording the intro. So. Um, but we're going to be talking about this dungeon as kind of its own dedicated video. Um, the final boss itself, not super difficult, but actually unlocking the boss is rather difficult compared to the other bosses uh, within the Between Lands. So you basically have your island biomes. Of course, there's two different kinds. You have your marsh biomes. There's two different kinds. Your swamp lands, your deep waters, and your sludge plains. Um, those are your primary areas, and you do have a couple little subtypes. Uh, to bear in mind like the clearings for example but um, but yeah I think that pretty much covers the biomes and their general characteristics of course once we start into herb lore there will be a little bit of a flora type video not covering every single plant but um, just covering plants in general and where you may want to go farm and stuff like that for plants uh, for for herb lore so once we start into our set of tutorials for that but but I hope this helped and, you know, now you know where to go about finding various different structures that you may be looking for um, within the Between Lands. We are going to start covering bosses here soon. Um, I think there's one other video that I would like to do, one or two more videos that I would like to do before we start covering bosses, but that's what we're going to be doing next. Basically covering all the exploration aspects and then we're going to be covering various materials, um, crafting things like the animator and stuff like that and then herb lore anyways i hope you guys found it helpful if you did as always be sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and i hope to see you guys for the next episode so until then as always do take care stay safe and i'll see you guys then